the name of the father son and the holy spirit amen for the glory of god let us join in singing praise light of the world you step down into darkness Step down into darkness open my eyes let me see beauty that made this heart the joy hope of a life spent with you here i am to worship Here I am to go Here I am to say worship the lord god is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth for the glory of god let us join in singing to god be the glory great things he has done Great things he has done to love. 
Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts, who do not lift up their souls to what is false and do not swear deceitfully. To the Lord our God belongs mercy and forgiveness, for we have rebelled against him and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God by following his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. The sacrifice acceptable to God is broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. O God, you will not despise. Jesus said, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. I will get up and go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty God, we are coming to your presence, to our Jesus Christ. Christ our worship and thanksgiving. Help us to make a true confession of our sins and to pray for others as well as for ourselves. Grant that by our listening to your holy word we may know more truly the greatness of your love and show forth 
in our lives that fruits of your grace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are up high above the earth, so great his steadfast love towards those <coughs> who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. As the father has compassion for his children, so that the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. Let us sincerely confess our sins in silence. Let us say the prayer together. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgression and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight? Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Amen. <laughs> you merciful Lord to your faithful people pardon and peace that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve you with a quiet mind through Jesus Christ our Lord Amen let us join in this prayer O sovereign God who urged us to be strong and courageous and entrusted us with the ministry of reconciliation, grant that we would not be afraid or discouraged to be the ambassadors of Christ, so that we could go out and proclaim and people would repent and believe in the gospel. Through Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. Now, the first lesson will be read to us from the Old Testament, book of Joshua, chapter 1, 1 to 9. For this Sunday's morning worship service, first, the first reading from the scriptures is taken from the book of Joshua, chapter 1. Verses beginning to read at 1 to 9. The Lord commands Joshua. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses is eight. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give, it, give to them. To the Israelites, I will give you every place where you set up 
your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the great sea on the west. No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law <coughs> of my, my servants Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to Thanks thee, be to o, thee o Christ. The second lesson is taken from Paul's epistle to Corinthians. Second letter. Verses from chapter 5, verses from 16 to chapter 6 to six, verse 10. Paul's second letter to Corinthians, chapter 5, verses from 16 to chapter 6 and verse towards 10. No longer then do we judge anyone by human standards, even if at one time we judge Christ according to human standards. We no longer do so. When anyone is joined to Christ, he is a new being. The old is gone, the new has come. All this is done by God who through Christ changed us from enemies into his friends and gave us the task of making others his friends also. Our message is that God was making all mankind his friends through Christ. God did not keep an account of their sins and he has given us the message which tells how to he makes them his friends. Here we are then speaking for Christ as though God himself were making his appeal through us. We plead on Christ's behalf. Let God change you from enemies into his friends. Christ was without sin, but for our sake God made him share our sin in order that in union with him we might share the righteousness of God. In our work together with God then we beg you who have received God's grace not to let it be wasted. Hear what God says. When the time came for me to show your favor, I heard you. When the day arrived for me to save you, I helped you. Listen, this is the hour to receive God's favor. Today is the day to be saved. We do not want anyone to find fault with our work. So we try not to put obstacles in anyone's way. Instead, in everything we do, we show that we are God's servants by patiently enduring troubles, hardship, and difficulties. We have been beaten, imprisoned, and mobbed. We have been overworked and have gone without sleep or food. By our purity and knowledge, patience and kindness, we have 
shown ourselves to be God's servants by the Holy Spirit, by our true love, by our message of truth, and by the power of God. We have righteousness as our weapon, both to attack and to defend ourselves. We are honored and disgraced. We are insulted and praised. We are treated as liars, yet we speak the truth. As unknown truth, we are known by all, as though we are dead. But as you see, we live on. Although punished, we are not killed. Although saddened, we are always glad. We seem poor, but we make many people rich. We seem to have nothing, yet we really possess everything. Here ends the reading. The glory of God, let us sing him, Lord, my word abideth. <laughs> According to St. Mark, chapter 6, verses from 7 to 13. The third reading is taken from the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 6, verses beginning to read at 7 to 13. Jesus sends out the twelve. Then Jesus went around teaching from village to village, Calling the twelve to him, he sent them out two by two and gave them authority over <coughs> evil spirits. These were his instructions. Take nothing for journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals, but not an extra tunic. Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. And if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, shake the dust off your feet you leave as a testimony against them. They went out and preached that people should repent. They drew out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. Here in the reading, praise, praise be to, to thee, O Christ. Christ. The preparation will sing, Spirit of the Living God. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth, meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O rock and our redeemer. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I wish you a great day and a great week. And I also wish those who are viewing this program, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in this crisis, we are someone to discuss and meditate upon an important theme in our life, which is called ambassadors, ambassadors of Christ. Ambassadors of Christ is something very unique to the world and it is a global talk that people everywhere talk about their national policies, international relations and also every day you find the responsibility of the ambassadors in the political realm is increasing. As problems and as crisis mounts, the responsibility of the government officials and those who represent one nation to the other, they got more responsibility in defending the policies of their own government and also analyze things which come across in their government capacities. Therefore, ambassadors are very unique personalities in the political life. Now, let me draw your attention to this concept called ambassadors of Christ. And who are those ambassadors? Bible or the Hebrew life or culture, Israeli or Jewish culture, interprets the duty and the quality of ambassadors as messengers, Messengers, again, refers to a big number of angels, God's people, prophets, apostles, evangelists, teachers, and the whole office of the church, early church. Yes, they are ambassadors, are called messengers. The very simple messengers, taking messages from one place to another. And they are called also interpreters. They have to interpret the policies, the agreements between two nations. And they are called interpreters of king's message to another king, other kingdom. And they are also called to be residents of other nation, other kingdom. Ambassadors can never become qualified ambassadors in their own country. They have to represent the king or the royal authority in other nations. Therefore, they are normally non-residents. Non-resident. They reside outside the country which they are called to represent, called to reside. And these are the main characters of the ambassadors in the Hebrew or in Jewish culture. I would like to trace few important events of ambassadors in the Old Testament. And in the book of Joshua, chapter 9, verses 4, there were people called Gibeonites. They are the people with 
not a good heart and they are the people who will take advantage of the disturbances or the problems between two nations or the invaders here it so happens that joshua when he crossed the river jordan with a miracle he establishes a altar from 12 tribes and the army was so powerful because of god's favor these gibeonites were one side scared of joshua on the other side they want to be mischievous about representing them as ambassadors to this great leader called joshua they go and misrepresent joshua as if they are the ambassadors of some country they are brothers and sisters in christ they go with pretension they take the rotten food they take the cloth which are not the cloth of an ambassador in not decent presentation of themselves before joshua and they pretend as if they were from long time traveling to that place whereas their place was around this place called jordan and trans jordan but joshua he recognizes their mischievous nature and their deceiving attitude and he punishes them by keeping them as the servants of god he punishes them by making them to work in the tabernacle dear brothers and sisters in christ god calls us to be ambassadors of his kingdom therefore we need to be very honest in our duty as interpreters of god's word as also we are the representatives of this great god there should not be any pretension yes we are given a high office to be ambassadors of his grace and his mercy and there is nothing to be deceived by this world you nothing to be misrepresenting here here gibonites were punished for not committing themselves to this great office of ambassadorship this is the first story and secondly ambassadors from babylon it was pre exilic period ambassadors from babylon to visit hezekiah this is also a big story it comes in second chronicles chapter 32 verse 31 where they were representing a prosperity prosperity and they were there as ambassadors from babylon eskia we know that he is a great king and he was also punished by god and the other ambassador story comes from second chronicles chapter 35 verse 21 where king joshua he is one of the reformers of the early church early temple temple of god and jewish religion he is a great warrior prayer warrior and he is the one who exposed people to the scriptures and he also receives the ambassadors from egypt from pharaoh called nico nico sends ambassadors to king joshua whereas 
this person joshia he refuses to accept them as ambassadors he disgraces them therefore god punishes joshia for that and god speaks through the ambassadors of egypt this is a rare passage in the bible therefore with this also we have story from david david the great king has ambassadors and they were rejected by a king called hanun hanun it comes in second samuel chapter 6 1 to 4 this great king david persuades people or the king hanun to accept the ambassadors and thereby he was rejected through his ambassador so god is angry against this king hanun therefore my dear brothers and sisters in christ he gets a curse the three stories says that god represents god gives his representation through ambassadors and either the ambassadors are doubt, uh, doubted by the king who receives or they may reject him for that rejection also god curses them those who are accepted by the other nation other kingdom they were honored they were given great respect so it seems the pre monarchic or pre king time israeli story is not a favoring story for ambassadors it is in a formation kind only maybe after solomon the political nature of ambassadors becomes very clear now let us go to the spiritual aspect of ambassadors the duty of ambassadors as we read from the second corinthians chapter 5 and chapter 6 paul speaks a contradictory situation where we are poor but at the same time we are rich we are abundant at the same time we are respected we are rejected at the same time we are accepted we are honored so these contradictions in life makes the life of ambassador a most responsible one most responsible one so in new testament we are called ambassadors for christ yes definitely and we are ambassadors god makes his appeal through us and also the first duty of the ambassadors according to paul's teaching is that we are called to become the ministers of reconciliation ambassadors here are those who were received by christ in his grace our sins are forgiven we are qualified to take the message of grace message of salvation to others and we are representing god we are representing christ we are representing christ grace and salvation therefore here we are qualified to be ambassadors means we are saved by god's grace and we need to take this message of this saving grace of god to others therefore my dear brothers and sisters in christ this is not a political situation of the ambassadors when the national crisis begins either in iraq iran or any place the other nations will withdraw their ambassadors withdraw their representatives government representatives and the embassies will be closed here we see a situation there are times that these ambassadors of christ the 
the evangelists of Christ, the prophets of Christ, the preachers of Christ, preachers of God's kingdom are rejected by people. And this is the reality of this world. Yes, it is a privilege to be ambassadors, the, the worshippers, the faithful, the saved people. At the same time, we are also rejected. That's the reality. We were dishonored. We were deceived. And we were ill-treated in this world because we represent not this, but we represent God. And there is a dichotomy between God's world and the world of Satan. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I think Paul is giving a high office to those who are believers. And through them, God wants us to be reconciling with the world. God wants his representatives to represent his reconciling grace. Through that, the others also will become friendly. This is exactly the teaching of Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and 6. He wants people who are enemies once must become peaceful friends in the future. And they need to be treated like friends. They are equals. Because they represent the other nation. And they are also part of promoting the nation which they represent. Here we are called to be ambassadors and we are the people to represent the grace of God, the love of God, the eternal salvation of God through reconciliation. Satan brings obstacle to this kind of reconciliation and promises and agreements. Therefore, ambassadors are the people who are called to do reconciling ministry. And they are called to be righteous and they will be working together, working as team. Working as team. I'll come to that in the gospel. And they accept the grace of God. And totally they are the people who accepted the grace of God. And now they are in the work of sharing God's grace. And they are called the acceptable people. They accept the time. They wait for the time. When they are appointed to be ambassadors of that country to another nation. And they wait for the time. They will not declare as if things are happening. They wait for God's time. They wait for events to take place. Then only they represent, they talk about their policies. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in Ephesians also we see that we are ambassadors of Christ. Paul very clearly talks about that. And therefore, they wait for time. They wait for things to happen. Now, let me go to the book of Joshua. Book of Joshua was the chapter 1 beginning from 1 to 9, it talks about God's cluster of promises. Ambassadors are most privileged people, yes. At the same time, they are the most risk-taking personalities. Here in this world, or also in political world. And he says, God says that, I will be with you. Yes, without the authority of the government, without the support of the government represented, Ambassadors become very weak. Therefore, he says, I will be with you. God says to Joshua that when you are going to this land, you are going to acquire this land as well as you will be my ambassador. You are my representative. You represent the values of God. You represent the grace of God. You represent the power and the mightiness of God. And that's what you wanted to you want me to be with you. Therefore, I am with you, he says. And he also says, you be strong and courageous. Courage is part of God's representatives. Without the courage, without a strong willpower to face the problem, their brothers and sisters in Christ, 
now we are facing the problem yes we need to be very courageous and the cluster of promises comes to us today in this world we represent god as ambassadors in this crisis therefore we need to be understanding that god is with us emmanuel is with us and he says you be strong and courageous and he also says don't be terrified don't be terrified with the people around you and the crisis around you yes every day we we witness so many loss of death and loss of loss and destruction of families dear brothers and sisters in christ let us not be terrified by the things around us we are called by god and he will protect us do not be discouraged do not be discouraged discouragement is one of the worst enemies of the ambassadors who represented the nation in the old testament they were discouraged either the king david was discouraged or the neko neko's ambassadors to the kings pre exile kings they were discouraged but here god says that do not be discouraged and he says i am with you always this with you always is always an important promise of god so coming to mark chapter 6 this common ordinary fishermen and the ordinary people of the society were called to be ambassadors and here in mark chapter 6 7 to 13 it talks about an experiment jesus is making an experiment with disciples sending them by pair two two people together thereby sending to each they will be supportive of each other they will be encouraging each other in the discouragement they will be one and he also says what happens to the rejection when people reject you and this was a common scenario in jewish and gentile circles jews never like gentiles not gentiles never like jews there was always a difference between these two communities accepting therefore here jesus is sending these disciples for reconciliation ministry of reconciliation you heal them you you protect them from all dangers and do miracles preach the gospel preach the grace love everything you preach at the same time you be conscious of their rejection if they reject you they are rejecting god's kingdom they are rejecting your ambassadorship of heavenly father you represent god therefore they are not rejecting you individually but they are rejecting god they are rejecting values and kingdoms of god therefore he says dust it your brothers and sisters in christ that means i will carry whatever i brought and i didn't lose anything if at all i am losing i am losing my dust nothing i lose therefore jesus is sending them with all this kind of responsibility and he also says sometime in 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 other gospels he says take the staff this is for protection yes you take the protection and therefore he encourages them and he also calls them back preparing them well and he says don't take anything ambassadors will carry so many things they will carry their office staff they carry their files they carry the information the whole infrastructure of ambassador's office embassy is the word coming comes from um, uh, ambassador so the whole office is well equipped here it is not like that when you represent god's kingdom you you should be very simple you should not carry the things to impress people because that is not your duty the heavenly father will provide everything dear brothers and sisters in christ today we are in the crisis of this needs we need more things we need to be very comfortable and here god says you 
carry nothing i will provide you therefore finally we have an authority as believers of god we have an authority to share this reconciling nature of god and we are given power by god and reconciling reconciling means bringing people to the nature and also bringing people to re rethink their repentance rethink their past to come to the lord secondly we have an authority of the holy spirit we have authority to serve people preach the gospel pray for them heal them touch their heart give them help comfort give comfort to them at the same time encourage them to be part of god's kingdom jesus throughout his life he was part of this and he was given the power through holy spirit today my dear brothers and sisters in christ jesus assures us the power of the holy spirit he is a comforter who will be with you in your going and coming wherever you go you go holy spirit accompanies you and it empowers you to do god's ministry and this is a faith we need to think of and we are called to do healing both spiritual physical and other healings holistic so we need to bring people as whole to god and we have authority to share this great salvation rakshaneena naavu devarige devaralli hanchikollavu therefore we have a great responsibility as ambassadors and we are accountable to god this is exactly is the story in the old testament and kings were not accountable and ambassadors were not accountable they took it as granted by their actions therefore they were punished therefore my dear brothers and sisters in christ as ambassadors we have great responsibility to represent god's nation god's kingdom god's values god's salvation god's power god's healing god's ministry god's unity at the same time we are accountable to god our time is very precious our opportunities are very precious and our situations are very precious and there we honor god we exalt god in our ministry bible says that you are evangelist but at the same time when you see paul talking to the believers as ambassadors he is giving some greater positions greater spiritual position greater social position to accompany god's work therefore my dear brothers and sisters in christ let us realize that we are called for a responsible citizens of god's kingdom representing in this world therefore let us go with god's standard rather than our standards let us bow down before the lord and pray for the great power which will enable us to take this message as ambassadors of christ let us pray god our heavenly father we thank and praise thee for the wonderful way you led the believers especially honoring them with the ambassadorship representing your nation your values your kingdom your authority your power and your government at this hour of prayer lord we commit ourselves into mighty hand this time of crisis you have showed us your encouragement your power your authority your presence in our life so that we will be the effective ambassadors in the days to come help us to understand your concern through this office of ambassador as preachers as elders as heads of the families as pastors evangelists and teachers be with us and help us to grow in your stature in jesus name we pray amen
let us affirm our faith in apostles creed i believe in god the father almighty creator of heaven and earth i believe in jesus christ god's only son our lord who was conceived by the holy spirit born of the virgin mary suffered under pontius pilate crucified died and buried he descended to the dead the third day he rose again he ascended to heaven seated at the right hand of the father and he will come to judge living and the dead i believe in the holy spirit the holy catholic church the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting amen dear brothers and sisters in christ we should be grateful to god for leading us in this lockdown situation we met all the time on sundays through online programs and it is also the promise of god that 133 psalm says that the brothers and sisters should dwell together but the situation is not conducive for that physical coming together is not possible therefore god has led us through this wonderful time of prayer and worship therefore through our uh, efforts we have finished 14 services sunday services and uh, with the help of the technicians we are able to record all these services and also bible studies and uh, you will get this on uh, with this uh, youtube uh, reference krista krupalaya church and we will be dedicating the 14 services recorded and also bible studies and also the music music uh, krista krupalaya church music you can go to these uh, sites and you can just uh, refer those hymns or the lyrics or the praise songs you will be uh, you will be on their uh, uh, in the in your website you come across this therefore let us praise god for this wonderful way of communication uh, communicating things of god to people and this will be for the further use of our people and as well as for those who view these programs every sunday and every thursday and therefore uh, on behalf of pastorate committee and uh, the technical team i i really thank uh, the people who are working hard on this uh, recording all this uh, material for us for further use and uh, i will dedicate this for the further use of our people in the name of the father son and the holy spirit i dedicate this whole material and uh, this site for the further use of god's kingdom we will also pray for those who are in need and those who are in trouble those who are in uh, real crisis let god show his way we should not be discouraged we should not be scared of things and let us not get into panic for the things around us god is with us god is with us and he will be leading us through this path let us pray god our heavenly father we thank and praise thee for the wonderful way you led us throughout this season and this hour of prayer lord we commit all of us into a mighty hand be with us you are the lord who helped us to undergo all the trials and temptations and also fear and we have witnessed so many events in this world lord with all that your presence continues with us your encouragement your strength your power and your healing hand will carry us from time to time once again at this our prayer lord we commit those who are in need those who are in situations where they are not able to understand but you are the lord who will bring healing you will you the lord you will bring understanding to 
all people who are in trouble and who are in need once again lord bless them abundantly take their problems and crises away from their life and bless abundantly so that they will realize your love grace and salvation lord at this our prayer we also pray for sunday school children those who are watching the program every sunday and we also pray that their maturity will grow in christ knowledge and in god's standards at this our prayer lord we commit teachers parents and also ch- children into your mighty hand bless their education bless their time of attending the classes through online once again lord we commit all of us and our needs and also our demands and our prayers into your mighty hands in jesus name we pray amen our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come will be done in earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those trespasses against us lead us not into temptation deliver us from evil thine is the kingdom power and the glory forever and ever amen our closing hymn is great is thy faithfulness o god my father Great is thy faithfulness o god my father there is no shadow of turning with thee no changes no compassion they fail not as the Great is thy faithfulness Great is thy faithfulness Morning and morning you mercy is I see All I have needed thy hand has provided Great is thy faithfulness Lord unto me summer and winter and spring time and harvest sun moon and stars in their courses above join with all nature in many fold witness to the great faithfulness mercy and love Great is thy faithfulness Great is thy faithfulness Morning by morning you mercy is I see All I have needed thy hand has provided Great is thy faithfulness Lord unto Pardon for sin and be peace that end your wrath. Thine own dear presence to cheer and go guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with ten thousand besides. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning new mercies I see, all I have needed thy hand has provided, great is thy faithfulness, Lord unto me. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.